Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Mary's Episcopal Church. Whether you are here in person today or joining us online, thank you for being a part of our worship. Um, if you are our guest today, we are so glad you've come. I see that we do have some guests in person today. Thank you for being here. Please know that a part of our worship today will include Holy Communion, and all Christians are welcome to receive Holy Communion. I do have a couple of community announcements. I'm going to trust you to read. Okay, here we go. I'm going to make some community announcements, and I'm going to trust you to read all the details. So here's the overview. You can read the details on our webpage or look at your e-news. Okay, at the end of this month, on October 30th, which is a Saturday, we are going to have something called Trunk or Treat. This has become a tradition in our community. Last year, we had over 100 children come through in their costumes for Trunk or Treat, which happens in the back parking lot. This is what we need our community to do. We need at least 10 people, at least 10 to make this fun, to decorate your car or parking space or both. So that when the kids drive through our property, there are fun places to stop and get candy. So we need 10 people to sign up. And if you would like to sign up, you're gonna sign up with Lori Corbishley or Jenny Nessero. Jenny happens to be here today, very visibly holding that cross. <laughs> Okay, so sign up with Jenny. Uh, we also need people to bring candy. Last year, with over 100 children, we did run out of candy. So I ran to CVS, mid, mid trunk or treat, and got all the rest of their candy. So please bring candy the next two Sundays and leave it at the welcome table. Okay, that's what we need you to do. Trunk or treat, it's lots of fun. And of course, invite your neighborhood children and bring your children and grandchildren. Okay, next. Please read all the details online or in your e-news. Oh, in November, beginning November 7th, we are going to move worship inside. The Moving Forward Task Force, which has been navigating and charting a course throughout the pandemic, believes that we will be safe. So we're going to move inside, and worship time is going to be 9 a.m. We are also going to resume our adult Bible study at 10.15 a.m. And if someone is willing to organize the sign-ups for coffee hour, we are going to resume having coffee and fellowship together. That's if someone is willing to simply hold up that big sheet of paper and organize sign-ups. We know that there are lots of people who will serve coffee, but we just need one person every three months to organize the paper sign up. So, if that's you, please see Marlo. Marlo is standing right here in front of me. Okay. Finally, it's my pleasure and joy to introduce Lee Ferreira, who is going to um, bear witness to the power of giving. Lee joined our church in 2019, and she serves on our vestry, and she also serves as the coordinator for Invite, Welcome, Connect. She has been incredibly um, discerning in understanding what her unique gifts are, what God has given her to share, and she's also been very brave in trying new things here at St. Mary's. So, Lee, thank you so much for speaking with us this morning. Good morning. Can everybody hear me? Um, good morning again, and thank you, Jennifer. Um, again, my name is Lee Ferreira, and I have been attending St. Mary's Church for about two and a half years. 
Um, I live in Portsmouth. In fact, I grew up here. Um, I lived away for about 15 years, but I came back home, and I'm glad I did. As I said, this is home and the place where I want to be. Um, I'm married. My husband, Bill, and I have five children between us, as well as 13 grandchildren. The bad news and the good news is they don't all live next door. <laughs> um, I'm retired. I worked for the Navy as a financial analyst at the Naval Undersea Warfare Center. Um, since retiring, I've been volunteering at several organizations throughout town. I volunteered for Newport, Newport Hospital, the Newport School System, and Child and Family. Right now, I'm on the hospice volunteer with visiting nurses. Um, I grew up as a Roman Catholic. I went to Mass every week, but I wasn't really very involved in my church. At some point, it didn't feel right for me any longer, and I stopped going to church. After several months, I did some research online, and when I visited the Saint, um, website of St. Mary's Parish, it was alive and vibrant, and I felt as if this was a place that I wanted to visit. I wasn't unfamiliar with St. Mary's. Um, my, my grandmother was an Episcopalian, and I did have family members that attended St. Mary's some time ago. Um, the first time I tried a visit to St. Mary's Church, I was very impressed by Jennifer's address. Before the service, she addressed parishioners and visitors as well. And she said, you are all welcome here. No matter who you are, no matter where you're from, or who you love, you are welcome here. Um, um, that was very personal to me. It felt as if I could be truly accepted here, unconditionally, just by being me. So I kept coming back, and that sense of acceptance is still with me. And after I attended that first service in 2019, I became, formally became an Episcopalian in February of 2020. In February of 2021, I joined the vestry. Um, I can't help but wonder what's gonna, what's in store for me in February 2022. <laughs> um, I've been very fortunate in my life. I'm healthy, as are those of my family. Financially, I'm not rich, but I am comfortable. I have always tried to share my good fortune with those less fortunate and with my church. When I started coming to St. Mary's, it was only natural to, to continue to contribute. Supporting St. Mary's is somehow very personal to me. It's a smaller church than I've been attending. It isn't a large organization far away. I'm contributing to the needs of this parish and this community, and as well as the Martin Luther King Center, just a couple miles down the road. It's a pleasure to be able to share what I have with this community, and which I feel very much at home. I encourage you all to, con to consider sharing your time, your talent, and your treasure with this community as well. Thank you very much.
the one holy and living God. Glory to you forever and ever. with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. lesson is a reading from Amos. Seek the Lord and live, for he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel, with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood, and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them the levies of grain, you have built houses hewn of stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, and you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you, just as you have said, hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to remember to the raiment of Joseph. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. God. Now let us say together Psalm 90, verses 12 through 17. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we have suffered adversely. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. 
May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of your hands. Prosper our handiwork. The second reading is taken from Hebrews. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing it until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are. Yet without sin, let us therefore reproach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in need of time. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then, come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked, and he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. 
And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house, or brothers, or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers, and sisters, mothers, and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. That many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I wish to speak to you in the name of God, who is creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. As we are in this season of acknowledging and giving thanks for every perfect gift, which comes from heaven, which comes from God, I wanted to start this morning by giving thanks for the children who are in our community. And of course, since I'm going to start my sermon talking about children, I'm noticing that they're not really here this morning, except where's Isaac? He's in the playground. <laughs> Isaac, thanks for being our child today. <laughs> but I'm going to paint a picture of children that I think you're going to remember. At least I remember them vividly, and they're a gift. The day that we were blessing bags and backpacks, there was a little child here. His name is Will. I hadn't seen Will much since he was an infant before the pandemic. I think he's about two and a half or three now. And maybe you can remember that as we had people come forward for the blessing of bags and backpacks, there was this small child, Will and he came from the back from under that tree and I could see him coming for me. And he was coming like this. And I was thinking to myself, oh no, oh no, he's coming in for a hug. And my pandemic brain and body said, oh no. <laughs> Especially not since I know you're not vaccinated but he came and he grabbed me around the knees and I put my hand on his head. There he was, he just wanted to receive. And then a few weeks ago while Laura was preaching and she was preaching about vulnerability and in that week's gospel good news, Jesus was saying, you need to welcome the children. That's how you welcome me. 
And do you remember little Mac, who was baptized just in July? He doesn't walk very well, but wander he was. While Laura was talking about welcoming children, there he was, as if we had paid him <laughs> to be a sermon prep. Wandering around our worship, knowing he was welcome and also in some sense welcoming all of us. And then last week, while Megan was here preaching, she came with her family and I don't know if you knew this, but before the service, her two-year-old or three-year-old Emily found a way to cut her finger on a chair up here and started bleeding a lot. Now, we're wearing white, Megan's wearing white, and so I just looked out in the congregation before we had begun worship and said, does anyone have a Band-Aid? And Cindy gave us a whole assortment, every size. Emily was just holding up that finger, bleeding all over the place and trusting, trusting that her needs would be met. And they were. And then later in the service, her older brother, Sam. I can't remember if Megan was preaching or if I was um, saying the Eucharistic prayer, but what I remember is that at some point, Sam comes tearing up that aisle, not in the center, but darting in and out of these yellow cones. Just being a kid, coming toward the place of blessing, playing. And then I talked to Megan later in the week and I said, you know, I, I know your kids were maybe challenging for you, but their presence among us really mattered. And she said, yeah, I know, but as we were leaving, Emily cried the whole way home. She just said, I just want to go back to church. And then Sam said, I don't care that you're preaching somewhere else next week. Daddy needs to take us back there. So I fully expected at least those two kids would be here today. But <laughs> I think the adults might have prevailed because they're not here. But still, they're a gift to us. And I bring that up first today because I think that today's good news is backed right up, literally, in the Gospel of Mark, to Jesus telling us that if we want to enter the kingdom of God, we need to pay attention to children. We actually need to be like them, receiving, wandering, and welcome, trusting, and playing. And then we need to repeat and return. You see, in the Gospel of Mark that we hear today, Jesus is on a journey. But this story is, is very carefully placed between Jesus' blessing of the children and Jesus' third prediction that He's not on any old journey. He is on the way to Jerusalem. It's his third prediction of his death and resurrection. That's where today's portion of the good news sits. It is backed right up against Jesus blessing the children. That might have been lost on us last week with all the running, playing, trusting children and the dogs and all that talk of divorce. But let's go back for a moment. You see, people were bringing children to Jesus so that he could just touch them. And the disciples were annoyed by this. So they spoke sternly to those people, but Jesus was indignant. He said, no, you let those children come because it is to such as these as the kingdom of God belongs. And if you can't be as a child, you won't be able to receive it. And then, he picked up those rambunctious, 
receiving, trusting, playful children into his arms. He touched them and he blessed them. And then we hear this story today. How quickly we forget what it is to receive the kingdom of God like a child. This man comes up to Jesus and what does he say? What do I need to do? What do I need to do to inherit eternal life? As if it were all up to him. And what does Jesus do? He looks at that man with such tenderness and compassion, such love and respect, and he knows exactly what that one man needs to do. And it's not easy. He says, I know you know the commandments. And the guy says, oh yeah, I know them. I've been practicing them since I was young. Jesus looks at him with all love and respect and tenderness and says, well, sell all your belongings and give that money to the poor because Jesus knows that for this man, that is the one thing that's keeping him from receiving from wandering around with God and welcoming God and being welcomed by God and trusting God and playing with God. That wealth is the thing that's keeping him from receiving God's kingdom. And that man goes away grieving because Jesus knew him. And Jesus wanted him to get his life back. The disciples are there. They've been wandering around with Jesus for a while now. For them, this doesn't sound automatically like good news. Jesus takes it a step further. He's not messing around. He says, it's going to be so hard for wealthy people. It's going to be like a camel going through the eye of a needle. That is so hard. In fact, it's impossible. Peter just says, come on, Jesus, we've already given up everything we've been following. What are you talking about? It's important for us to remember that this story is backed right up against that blessing and those words. We need to be like children. We need to remember it's not about what we achieve. Or what we have we can't make ourselves secure we cannot give ourselves eternal life or enter the kingdom for us it's impossible and the good news is with god all things are possible right that's the great line of good news today with god all things are possible so let's remember receive wander Welcome, trust, play, and then return and repeat. Doesn't that feel good? It's not up to us. So here are two questions. Maybe if I say, you know, what do you need to do to get eternal life? That would defeat the whole purpose. So let me just ask two questions today for you. What is it that would nourish your spiritual life right now? What is it that would nourish your spiritual life? And the second question is this. What is it that you might need to put down, or let go of, or give to someone else, or give to the church that would help you to nourish your spiritual life? What might you need to let go of, or give away, or give to the church that could help you nourish your spiritual life so that you could receive, wander, welcome, trust, play, return and repeat? What is it? So think about your spiritual nourishment this week. And here are two things that I want to encourage us as a church to do, to actually do. 
The first one is that we actually have children and youth in our community, despite what you might see this morning. <laughs> we actually have them. They're among us, children and youth. We need to do something more significant in ministering to them because we need to teach them and we need to learn from them. So if you are someone who feels that this is important and you feel called in some way to do more in our church in terms of ministry to children and youth, I need you to pay attention to that calling and I need you to be in touch with me. That's one. The second thing is, as an adult community and as adult learners, there's very little practice we can do that is more impactful than studying God's word together. And we have the gift of an adult Bible study that will begin again in November. We have a gifted teacher in Karen LaRoche who is trained. She is a biblical scholar and she is an excellent teacher. And so I need you to join with me in adult Bible study. It will begin at 1015 in November. Because we can't achieve eternal life, but we can receive. We can wander, we can welcome, we can trust, we can play, and we can return and repeat. And all things are possible with God. Amen. Standing as you are able, let us affirm the historic faith of the church. We believe in one another, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified of the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, please worship and glorify. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In gratitude for all we have received, every perfect gift that comes from God above, we offer our intentions, petitions, and thanksgivings to God. We pray for the church founded on the gift of your word and for all who gather to worship, praise, and work. For your blessings on the ministries of St. Mary's and her leaders, on our presiding bishop, Michael, 
on our Bishop Nicholas and our priest Jennifer. May we who witness your saving acts in the world be ever grateful for every perfect gift. Teresa comes from God above. We pray for the world, your greatest gift to us and the gift of all creation. We pray for the welfare of our planet and for the wise stewardship of our world. Bless and guide our president, our legislative and judicial institutions, and the members of our local govern government. May they forever care for the people they represent and work for peace and justice. I invite your prayers for the world, either aloud or in silence of your hearts. May we who witness your power in the world be ever grateful for every perfect gift, which comes from God above. We pray for the work of our church in the world as we enter this season of intention and focus on the gifts that we give. Inspire us to be generous with our time, our talent, and our treasure. We pray for those who are new to our church May they experience support and strength as they share in our mission and ministry. May we who witness the impact of our gifts in the community be grateful for every perfect gift, which comes from God above. We pray for our neighbors and all who need our prayers. We remember the sick, the lonely, the suffering, those oppressed domestically or abroad, and all in need of healing. For Reen, Diane, David, Fred, Kathy, Richard, Ian, and Julie, for those we name aloud are in silence of our hearts. for mm Michael. -hmm. We pray for those whose needs are known to you alone. May we, wit may we who witness your healing in the world be grateful for every perfect gift which comes from God above. We pray for those who have died. May they rest in peace and may light perpetual shine upon them. We pray for our founder, Sarah Gibbs, John Sawicki, who was buried on Friday, and Danetta Roebuck, who was buried on Saturday. For those we name aloud are in silence of our hearts. Marshall, Max, Rose, Joanne, and Adrian. Thank you especially for those past members of our church whose gifts of money and ministry are felt beyond their lifetimes. May we who witness your eternal love in the world be grateful for every perfect gift which comes from God above. We pray for ourselves that we are aware of the blessings we have received and those we share with the world. Help us to name them in thanksgiving. May we who witness our gifts at work in the world be grateful for every perfect gift. With grateful hearts, we thank you, abundant God, for hearing the faithful prayers of your people, granting them grace and awareness of every perfect gift. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. And again, seeing, um, seeing guests, I just want to remind you again that you are welcome to receive Holy Communion today. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, O holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us in all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. in the world around us 
and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with the blessed Mother Mary and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation.
Oh.
Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May God give you comfort and peace, light and joy, and a keen awareness and gratitude for every perfect gift. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And thanks be to God.